A very good morning to um, all of you, and um, I feel um, very um, privileged and honored also to, um, to be here uh, with you today. Um, first, I would um, like to um, express my um, respect to Ukraine and, um, of course, all those who have been fighting for Ukraine for those many years, not only from the 24th of February, but already when um, the um, Russian aggressor started to um, invade Ukraine in 2014. So it's already 10 years, and of course, uh, this is something which um, is remarkable what you have achieved. And of course, all this, what um, you have been doing, is also what is bringing us here for the last more than 28 months uh, we also here in Brussels, in the European Parliament, in the European Commission, in the European institutions, we have been strongly supporting Ukraine and uh, we have never turned away. Because it is amazing what you do and we do admire this a lot. For us, in addition to the active political and military support, it is important also to support the people and keep up the hope. It's also important for us that the assistance reaches the people who need it as quickly as possible and as large scale as possible. For this to happen, we welcome all initiatives that deliver these goals and help to facilitate the support to Ukrainian people. Today's event is another good example of that, and it is uh, particularly uh, important that it is focusing on the veterans. We are not able to understand what you have and are going through over these 28 months. It is the fight for freedom of Ukraine, but more so, it has been the fight for the freedom of Europe. You have been fighting our war and you are all here more than Ukrainian veterans, you are European veterans, our European veterans. Your sacrifices have been going beyond Ukraine, and we acknowledge as well as respect that. In my country, Estonia, there is a lot of respect to the veterans that have been fighting for the freedom of our partners as members of international missions but you have been fighting for your own country. Nevertheless, we respect our veterans a lot, as well as their fight is also reinforcing the freedom of all of us. But your fight has earned a lot of respect all around the world, and your desire to become fully integrated to the European family has not been unnoticed. I want to congratulate you also for the decision regarding the opening of the EU accession negotiations with you. It's not only well deserved, but it is also in a very hard way earned. Of course, when fighting the war, the rest seems all easier. But I'm here also to tell you that the path to the EU membership will be challenging. And a lot has to change in Ukraine before it reaches its end. It is a transformational process that would go across the whole society and change the country, but it is a good change to fight for, thus now without arms. I have been involved in the EU accession of my country for nine years and in the full process of negotiations as a person who was responsible for the coordination of our activities for the EU accession and membership. I know the challenge and the path that you are going to go through. Most important thing is to keep in mind that what you do is part of the transformation that you want to do to improve your country, your society, your business environment. You do it for yourself, not anyone else. EU accession is a lot about fulfilling benchmarks and changing legal and regulatory framework and setting up capable implementing structures. You do not do it for EU. You do it for yourself, for Ukraine, for your people, 
and businesses. This will make your country in the end function more efficiently and also benefit more from your closer integration to the EU and Western structures. Modernization of a country means reforms in all sectors and only then you can be economically more resilient and attractive to investments and create strong economic growth. Be also ready for the fact that the accession process will be longer than you expect. EU is a customs union with a well-functioning single market and the accession to that market means that your legislative and regulatory environment as well as enforcement capabilities have to be the same as elsewhere in the European Union. There is a lot of work, but the rewards are worth it. I have always said that this process is hard work and sweat and tears when I have been invited to talk about my experience, but this is perhaps very different when talking to you, Ukrainians. You have experienced and are experiencing it today so much that you might see the accession process differently, perhaps even easier. Accession is also about determination and delivery. I'm sure you will be able to do that. In fact, I have no doubt. All the events in the last 10 years in Ukraine have been about closer integration to Europe since Maidan happened. And now you are closest that you have ever been. It's also a process that binds the nation together in one goal. But again, that is what you have today already in fighting against the Russian aggressor. Also, bear in mind that becoming a member of EU also means the accession to all policies. And if you cannot do that, you cannot benefit from the EU membership as you should. So it is important to be ready and have a transformed society and overall governance framework. In parallel to the EU accession negotiations, the other big transformation will be the reconstruction of your country once the war is successfully won. This is in fact very much complementing your efforts to become the member of EU and I'm sure it gives you also ample opportunities to make your country more modern. EU will be there to support you. You can count on us. One of the areas that the reconstruction will transform is surely going to be connectivity. Ukraine must be better connected to EU and we need to focus on the strategic corridors that have been defined by extending the trans-European transport networks to the Ukrainian Black Sea coast. These will be the new arteries of trade and transportation with contemporary infrastructure, European gauge railway lines and smart and sustainable efficient multimodal transport corridors. That would open up new potential for trade and investments and also for the transportation sector. One specific area here where Ukraine has got a lot to gain and a lot to give is aviation. In 2022, and I'm happy to see Dima Babachuk here with us, the hero of Europe, Ukrainian aviation. In 2022, before the Russian aggression, our estimation was that Ukraine will be the fastest growing aviation market in Europe during summer 2022. Unfortunately, with the Russian aggression, it turned the opposite and commercial aviation in Ukrainian airspace has stopped for the last 28 months. But there would be a new opportunity once the airspace is open again and companies like Ryanair and Wizz Air, the ones who were last to leave the Ukrainian market, actually they flew until the 24th of February, they have said that they will return on the day when it is again safe to fly. I have no doubt there is a huge potential of aviation in Ukraine. And not only flying, but also anything to do with aviation, engineering, aircraft manufacturing. Ukraine has been for decades one of the powerhouses for aviation engineers and talents, professionals, and possesses wealth of knowledge and know-how. I'm sure this can bring many benefits in the future and equally high-level expertise and innovative jobs. Let me also say one last word. For Ukraine to be successful in the future, you need a vibrant civil society. The proof of that is also why we are here as the work of the European Association of Ukrainian Women 
international charity organization, Rutenia, as well as other voluntary organizations who have made this happen. I would here like to pay the tribute and appreciation also to uh, Violetta, where is she? <laughs> uh, for, the, for the tireless work for your country and veterans, as well as all the other ladies who have made this event possible and continue to work tirelessly for that cause. The women of Ukraine have, done, have gone through so much that one cannot put in words. But here they are, supporting their country and the fight for freedom in so many ways that draws a lot of respect and admiration. Remember also that without well-functioning civil society, it is difficult, if not impossible, to meet many challenges your country has, including the accession to EU. We are here to support you and to support the civil society in supporting Ukraine. That is also a reason why I proudly and humbly accepted the invitation to come here without a moment of thinking. It is the least I can do as an unwavering and caring friend of Ukraine, proudly decorated by President Zelensky, to show my support and my commitment. The event today is also sending a strong message that Ukrainian veterans and their families are integral part of the Ukrainian society in modernization and reshaping the country, today and tomorrow. And there is a lot of support to make sure that you can fulfill this role in the, in the best possible way. Different projects are being developed and with the help of proactive civil society and support of EU and international partners, it will be happening in reality. Finally, let me put it very clearly. Ukraine is Europe. It has always been and it will be taking its rightful place among other European nations as a full EU member in the future. You, don't, you do not need to prove what you are. You just need to do what is needed for this process to be successful. And I know there is a lot for us to learn from you. And your accession will make Europe in many ways richer and better together with you. You also have a lot of friends and these friends will always be here and support you. You can count on us. Thank you. Slava Ukraini.